Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, here, uh, Travis, before I send it over to you, I'm gonna go through our little Zoom spiel here. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the May 6th, 2021 Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. My name is Luke Mortensen, and I'll be facilitating the Zoom video portion of the meeting. With me here um, in the City Commission room is Catherine Week, Planner and Staff Liaison to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We will work alongside Chair Herod, who is on remote video, to facilitate the meeting's pr pr proceedings. Currently, um, everybody should be muted um, so we can talk to the general ground rules for tonight's meeting. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live on the city's YouTube channel and public access channel 25. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found on the lower left hand corner of the Zoom menu next to the video icon. When you are muted, a red line will appear over the icon. This will make it easier for everyone to hear the meeting. Just remember to unmute if and when you want to speak. In the menu, you can turn your camera on or off by clicking the video icon located next to the microphone icon. For the purposes of this public meeting, please keep your video on for the duration of the meeting. If you are participating by phone, you can enter star six to mute and unmute your phone. Somewhere on your Zoom screen, you will see a choice to toggle between speaker and gallery view. Speaker view shows the active speaker. Gallery view will tile all the meeting participants. Um, be aware we don't screen share as part of these meetings. All attachments, reference materials, and submissions from the public are, should be included in tonight's agenda packet that's available online. A few reminders to ensure that the provisions of the Kansas Open Meetings Act are met. Um, board members must state their name and title each time they speak. Uh, members of city staff will also be stating their names and titles each time they speak. Um, and then I ask that each applicant and member of the public identify themselves each time before they speak to ensure that everyone is able to follow along. Individuals who signed up in advance to provide public comment remotely will be called upon by name. When you are called on, please unmute your device and state your name before speaking. The chair will then call for in-person public comment for those who are physically present. Staff will determine if anybody is in the room at that time. All motions will need to be stated clearly. After a motion is made and seconded, staff will call on each commissioner individually to provide their vote. Um, staff will then announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. Uh, remind once again everyone to please meet yourself when you're not speaking. And at this point, I will turn it back over to Chair Herod. Thank you, Luke. Welcome everyone to the Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals. At this point, I'd ask staff to call the roll to determine if we have quorum. Good evening, board members. Catherine Weeks, staff liaison. Clark? Present. Falvey? Gardner? Herod? Here. Rankin? Present. Shalinsky? I'm here. Weisner? Here. Thank you. We have quorum. Thank you, Catherine. Next, we'll move on agenda to the communications section. Uh, first, I'd ask um that anyone on the board uh needs to acknowledge communicate or are there any communications to come before the board okay does any board member have to acknowledge any ex parte communications or abstentions regarding the agenda items tonight all right seeing none i'd ask staff if any agenda items are going to be deferred this evening Staff liaison, Catherine Week. Yes, we do have one deferral. Um, it's item B21-00007 um, for 2522 Alabama Street. That was deferred by the applicant. All right, very well. Well, then we'll move on to the public hearing portion of our meeting. And it looks like our first agenda item is B-21-00102. I'd ask staff to present to the board on that issue. Sure, good evening again, board members. This is Catherine Weeks, staff liaison. Um, I'm here to present the request for a variance to reduce the, set, the rear setback in an RS7 zoning district from 30 feet to 20 feet. Um, and this variance is located at 308 Eaton Drive. 
so just a brief synopsis in reviewing uh, variance requests. We do review for the five criteria, and the variance must meet all five criteria to re for us to recommend approval. The first criteria is that conditions are unique to the property um, and not created, not the variance request is not triggered by uh, the applicant. This particular property was platted in 2002 under the RS2 zoning district, which transferred to RS7 ad upon adoption of 2000 2006 land development code. The structure was built in 2003. Uh, both the platting and the construction took place under the previous zoning code, the 1966 zoning code. In that zoning code, there was an exemption for rear setbacks where the uh, setback could be reduced to 20 feet if um, the rear yard was not more than 30% of the lot area. This particular uh, property did comply with that exemption and therefore in 1966 or in 2003 when it was constructed, it did meet the requirements of the 1966 zoning code and would have been permitted at 20 feet. So in reviewing criteria number one, staff felt that that met that criteria. Um, criteria number two, that does not affect the rights of adjacent property owners. Staff found that this particular request would not affect uh, the adjacent property owner's rights. Criteria three, that it would constitute an unnecessary hardship. Um, staff did find that this could constitute unnecessary hardship. Failure to grant the variance would require or would render the, the current deck, them unable to use the current deck, nor would they be able to replace it upon deterioration. And since it complied with the zoning codes at the time it was constructed, staff felt that that was an unnecessary hardship to require removal or no longer have the ability to use a legally permitted deck. Number four, um, that it would not adversely affect public health, welfare, safety, et cetera. Staff felt it would not be a detriment or affect, adversely affect the public welfare. Um, and number five, that uh, the request is not opposed to the intent of the code. So the intent of the variance section is to offer relief um, where property owners may not be uh, able to legally use their property as it was designed. Um, staff found that this particular quest was not in opposition of the code section. And I would be happy to offer more details or answer any questions if you should have them. This is Chairperson Herod, does any of the uh, board members have any questions for staff? Seeing none, does the applicant want to present anything on this agenda item? This is Will Johnson. Um, I'm the applicant. Uh, my name is Will Johnson. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Will Johnson. I'm an associate product designer with Hermie Associates here in town and the applicant representative uh, for uh, the owners, uh, Kay Huff and Jonathan Kahn. Uh, thank you, staff, for your presentation. Uh, at this time, that's really she really covered uh, the the gist of this. Um, as as she mentioned, uh, the deck exists over the setback, uh, and we're really just trying to uh, bring it back into compliance uh, with this variance. So, currently, it's a thirty foot setback, and we're asking for the ten feet so that the entire deck resides within the prescribed setback. So. Is, yeah, but answer other questions. This is Chairperson here, and thank you, Mr. Johnson. Does any board member have any questions for Mr. Johnson? Or I think we have the applicant here tonight as well. That is correct. I'm Kate. My husband, Jonathan Kahn, is here. We bought um, this property and certainly weren't informed that it was uh, in violation of the current code. So we would have. Uh, we do appreciate the staff's work and recommendation. Thank you. This is Chairperson Herod. Um, if there's no questions for the app, uh, board member Rankin. Yeah, <clears throat> board member Rankin. And I think this is this has been stated, but uh, maybe spelled out 100 percent. Is the the deck's not going to go beyond what it is now, right? You're just essentially rebuilding it. 
Uh, this is Will Johnson. That's correct. Uh, we're just at this time. We're actually uh, just asking for the setback to be uh, reduced to 20 feet, so that the existing deck, again, yes, correct, resides entirely within the um, that setback. Thanks. This is Chairperson Herod. Is there any other questions for the applicant? All right. Seeing none. Is there any public comment on this agenda item tonight? Luke Morrison, planner. Uh, we don't have any any in person comments, and it does not appear that we have any virtual public comments either. All right. Well, if there's this is Chairperson Herod, if there's no opposition, then I'll bring the issue back to the board for uh, discussion and consideration. I just heard a ding. Does somebody just have an idea or? <laughs> uh, this is board member Shalinsky. Um, I have no discussion, but I will make a motion uh, that we uh, approve the application to reduce the rear set back to a minimum of 20 feet to allow for the uh, existing deck to be in compliance. This is board member Weisner. I'll second that motion. All right. This is chairperson Herod. Thank you. So board member Shalinsky has made a motion. Board member Weisner has seconded the motion. If there's no opposition, I would ask the staff to call the roll. Staff member, uh, Catherine Week Clark. Aye. Gardner? Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here. Herod? Aye. Rankin? Aye. Shalinsky? Aye. Wisner? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Catherine. This is Chairperson Herod. And thank you to the applicant. We will move on now to second agenda item tonight, which I believe is B-21-0016. Would staff please present for the board on this issue? Good evening, board members. Catherine Weeks, staff liaison. Uh, this item before you is B-21-00106. This is a request to reduce the exterior side setback um, located at 1001 Alma Drive. Uh, the request is for a desire to locate a 8 by 12 storage shed on the north side of the primary residence. And briefly going through the criteria, number one, that there are conditions unique to the property not brought on by the applicant or owner. Um, so this property was also platted and built under the 1966 zoning code. Um, unfortunately for um, this particular side yard request, there is not an exemption in that code for the side yard. The exemption is only for the rear yard. So the, the setback for the RM12D zoning district for uh, exterior side is 25 feet as it is today. So staff, in reviewing the first criteria, staff found that this particular criteria did not meet um, the standard for review. The 25 foot exterior setback was the same distance um, as it was when the property was constructed and platted as it is today. Um, and this particular action is the result of the property owner's desire for their preference to locate the shed in this location. The second criteria on would this adversely affect adjacent properties, staff found that this did, would not affect adjacent properties adversely. Number three, does it meet the standard for unnecessary hardship? Um, in reviewing this, staff found that it did not meet the definition of unnecessary hardship. There does exist some design solutions or alternatives that could uh, accommodate storage on the property. Um, so staff did not find that it met criteria number three. Number four, does it adversely affect the public welfare, et cetera? Staff found that this would not adversely affect public welfare. And criteria number five, 
um, is it opposed to the intent of the code um, due to the options that could be available um, staff found that it did not meet the intent of the code the intent of the zoning or variance request section is to again enable property owners to find relief when they are unable uh, unable to utilize their property in the manner um, for which it is zoned and again i would be happy to offer clarifications or answer any questions if you have any particular to any of the criteria in review this is chairperson Herod. Thank you, Catherine. Is there any questions for staff on this issue? Um, yeah, this is board member Shalinsky. Um, as I understand the application, uh, the applicant is proposing to put the shed on an existing patio and to, um, in some manner, fasten or secure it to the patio. Uh, my question is, if the applicant were to be wanting to put some sort of pre-built, pre-existing shed type structure in that location, but not secure it to the patio, uh, would that be in compliance with uh, the zoning code? Um, I'm not sure as it relates to the zoning code, I believe it would be required to be anchored for safety reasons or building code. Um, there, um, it would still exist outside of that setback restriction. So I don't believe even if it was detached or portable, so to speak, that it would comply. I suppose if it was on wheels and could be moved, um, that's one thing, I don't know. But I think there are building code issues associated with anchoring it. Thank you. This is Chairperson Harris, is there any other questions for staff? No, do we have the applicant here tonight to present? I see somebody talking, you might be on mute. Let's see if I can unmute him, I'll try here. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. My name is Evan Pingleton. I uh, filed the application for the property owner. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions about what our intentions are. Thank you, Mr. Pingleton. Uh, this is Chairperson Harris. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Pingleton? Um, yeah, uh, Board Member Shalinsky. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, drill down a little bit on some of the uh, hardship criteria. Um, okay. I drove by the site uh, this afternoon mm. and um, I noticed that there was a uh, for sale sign in the yard that I was not clear on whether that applies to the uh, entire structure or whether it's the other half of the duplex. It is the other half of the duplex, sir. Okay. So um, your client uh, is living at the property, is owning the property, and is intending to remain there. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That okay. is correct. Um. My other question then goes to the uh, proposed staff alternative. And in my looking at the property, it appears that the only alternative um, is essentially um, in what 
I might characterize as a drainage area. That's correct. Um, and uh, I'm wondering, from an engineering point of view, um, what type of construction and what type of expense would be necessary to make that area uh, suitable for a shed so that the contents didn't flood in a rain event? Well, there are uh, other issues besides the flooding of the shed. The, the other issue, would, mainly issue, is the flooding of the residence and the dwelling. Uh, we're looking at many thousands of dollars to re to uh, terrace and regrade the backyard, twenty five to forty thousand uh, dollars. If we're to build a smaller shed, or buy a big box store prefab eyesore kind of a thing that to put in there, uh, we could do that possibly by putting it between the windows of the back of the house, and that would not satisfy the desires of the homeowner. The homeowner wishes to build a shed that matches the house with same siding, same color, make it look like it belongs there, put it four feet away from the house instead of right next to the house so that should there be an emergency, fire, whatever, the emergency personnel could travel between the shed and the house. Uh, if there was ever a, another problem of some sort, that the shed could easily be accessible from the street rather than having to run around trees and things of that nature. It, uh, it just seemed like the logical place to put it. Uh, I realized that um, way back when somebody, uh, you know, when they planted the, the subdivision, did not have any kind of a preconceived notion about this. But the, uh, the owner of the house only recently bought it from a realtor who really was not able to disclose all the facts to him. He didn't necessarily intentionally mislead the buyer, but the buyer did act in haste uh, to buy the property. He had already sold his property in Topeka. He was working in Kansas City and having to drive back and forth. Didn't have much time. So he bought the duplex. Turns out the house he sold in Topeka was about a 4,500 square foot house. He has a lot of stuff. Uh, the the uh, duplex is not a large dwelling and he wanted to downsize, but he sold as much stuff as he thought he could and to get by. And turns out he has about enough stuff in the way of uh, holiday decorations, lawn care equipment, things like that to fill his garage. And so he's proposing building this shed uh, so he can have access and use of his garage. This is Chairperson. Board Harry. Member Shalinsky, I had one more question. Okay. Um, and uh, that is um, to ask you to confirm what I observed, which was that this is a corner lot. Um, and the uh, shed would be built on the portion of the property uh, that does not have a next door neighbor. So um, basically uh, the setback is from the street and not from a neighbor. Is that correct? It is correct. However, there is some uh, controversy or contention about the, how far it is. I searched with a Geiger counter for a pen, trying to determine exactly where the property line is. I was not able to find one. I did measure from the curb. The curb is 10 feet from the property line if, it's, if the curb is properly placed. And I'm going to assume that it is. If you take a tape measure and run from the corner of the patio, which would be basically the corner of the shed, to the street is 31 feet. If, if um, the cladding was observed to be correct, 
um, the shed would need to be within 35 feet or else it would encroach. So it's going to be within 31 feet. So we actually need a variance for, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five feet for the corner. Now the, the house dwelling is sitting kind of counter to square. So the front of the building of the proposed shed would only encroach in the setback somewhere around one to three feet. Um, like I said, this is the, the, the structure we have proposed is aesthetically pleasing. It is it matches the, the neighborhood and the property and would present an enhancement to the neighborhood as well as to his property. And anything that we tried to do to put it in the backyard or whatever would probably not enhance the property and might not be a pleasing to everyone's uh, opinion anyway. Um, this would not, because it is a corner lot, there is a lot more green space area than there is in the other um, buildings in the in the subdivision and this particular owner likes the fact that the green space in the in the back which is a drainage area would be preserved and he's not a, not at all averse to landscaping and maintaining it and keeping it looking real nice but um, any put any any sort of building that would be put back there would take away from his green space Whereas if you just put it on the patio, it would not affect his green space. But also not affect the drainage. It just seemed like the most reasonable place to put it on the property. All right, this is Thank you for answering my questions. This is Chairperson Herod. Does anybody else on the board have any questions for the applicant? All right, seeing none, is there any public comment tonight? Luke Mortensen, Planner, Planning and Development Services. There does not appear to be any virtual public comment, and we have nobody in the city commission room. So, Chairperson Herod, thank you, Luke. Uh, if there's no opposition, then I'll bring the issue back to the board for discussion. Does there need to be a ding again to get conversation going? <laughs> this is this is Chair Member Clark, and just as a, a a rough feel on how things are going, I I'm having a hard time getting behind this one. Um, if we need to step through it one at a time, I'd I'd be okay with that, and to identify the more pressing pain points. But at this point in time, I'm I'm agreeing with staff's report. Chairperson uh, Rankin, I, I agree with Clark. I, I don't feel like this is beyond hardship. It he wants to build a new property or new uh, structure on his property. Yeah, I have a hard time as well. This is Chairperson Herod. Uh, any other discussion? This, this is Board Member Weisner. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a scenario using the five conditions to justify this. And I'm, I'm also having the same problem. Um, and you guys all know me. I'll, I'll try my best to <laughs> look for ways for the applicant, but I, this is, I just don't see it. So I, I will be supporting the staff recommendation. This is chairperson Herod. I, I, I'm sorry. I just stepped on chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm board member Clark. That's all right. Um, this is board member Clark. I just looking over the conditions here. I would say the, the one that I primarily have a problem with is, uh, condition one being that this was not created by an action of the property owner or applicant. So if, if, if we needed a, a point to talk about, that would be the one, but this does seem to be based on the decision by the applicant. This is chairperson Herod. I would tend to, agree i appreciate the uh the applicant's forthrightness but it sounds like unfortunately the applicant or buyer 
he had to purchase in haste in his move from Topeka. And it sounds like he didn't get the right size property. Um, and so I think that would definitely bring him into conflict with condition one and condition five. I just, I don't think that our code and the, the reasons we have variances available under our code is to, you know, fix a situation where individual, you know, bought a, I don't know, a 1500 square foot property and needed a 2000 square foot property or something like that. I just don't think that's what the variance is for. Um, is there any other discussion or, or anything among the board members? Well, um, this is board member Shalinsky. I'm the one who is probably going to disagree here. Um, I think that there are some characteristics of the property that are unique in terms of um, the drainage situation, rendering the alternative location uh, not feasible, uh, it being a corner lot and um, actually sort of the way it's platted and constructed, the, the way that it um, faces on the lot is um, a little bit weird, but um, I'm also able to count votes and so I'm not gonna um, you know, try and change anyone's mind on this. Um, uh, I think I think arguments can be made that um, it is unique and that it is a hardship. Yeah, this this is Chairman Clark, uh, Chairman Shalinsky. I 100% agree with you on on those two points. I think the the challenge that I'm getting at is the that this was a decision by the the applicant, and we have to have all five conditions met, not just a selective few. Thank you, Board Member Clark. This is Chairperson Harrod. Is there any other discussion or anything on this agenda item? anybody want to make a motion one way or another? This is Chairman Clark. I'll make a motion uh, that we accept staff's recommendation and deny the variance as requested. All right. Board, board member Rankin, I will second that. All right. So board member Clark has made motion uh, to uh, deny the variance to reduce the required set, uh, side setback from 25 feet to 15 feet. It's been seconded by board member Rankin. If there's no other, if there's no opposition, then I would ask the staff to call the roll. Staff liaison, Catherine Week. Clark? Aye. Herod? Aye. Rankin? Aye. Chalinski? No. Weisner? I think you cut off there. I didn't hear your vote. Weisner? Aye. Okay, thank you. The motion carries. Thank you, Catherine. All right. Just a quick point of clarification. This is just so that everybody listening at home or anyone listening at home is clear. I think Nate is reverting back to old habits. Um, Travis Herod is our chairman and Nate is a board member. So just to make oh. sure we've got, <laughs> we've got everybody on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's throwback Thursday. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm, my apologies, that is my bad. It's all good, I know it was a habit, so. <laughs> I mean, here we had a peaceful transfer of power and <laughs> this happens. It's just it's tragic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this, is, this is Chairperson Herod, and uh, we'll move on to our third agenda item, which looks to be B-21-00108. Would staff please advise the board on this issue? Yes, good evening, everybody, and forgive me. Oh, we're going to let uh, board member Gardner in here right now. 
Catherine, do we need to call a new roll or anything? Um, I don't think we need to call a new roll, but I will acknowledge that we have a, a, a board member entering um, for the third item. Okay, great. All right, um, forgive me everybody, it is deck season, so as Chair Herod, not Chair Clark, just mentioned, <laughs> item number four tonight is a request to consider a variance from the rear building setback for a uh, deck reconstruction at 3104 West 28th Circle. The applicant is seeking a variance to reduce the required 30 foot rear yard setback to 22.1 feet for the proposed reconstruction of an existing elevated deck. The subject property was originally platted and recorded in 1977. Um, the existing residence per register of deeds records was built in 1986. Um, both the platting and the construction of the subject property came in under the 1966 zoning code and was subject to that 30 foot rear yard setback for the RS2 district. Um, the existing deck was constructed partially within that required setback and has remained within that setback ever since. The deck came into cons to existence legally per the rear yard exemption that Catherine noted earlier, section 20-1504 of the city's 1966 zoning code. Just to review one more time, that exemption allowed in RS1, RS2, and RMD zoning districts that a building may be located no closer than 20 feet to the nearest property line opposite the front line, provided that rear yard area is no less than 30% of the total lot area. Uh, this, as Catherine noted, was not brought over um, when the new code was adopted in 2006. So if we maintained that 30 foot rear setback, uh, any deck structure would basically be limited to at least two feet or less. Um, the existing residence is approximately 30 to 32 feet from the rear property line. It's kind of at an angle. Um, the applicant is not looking to expand the depth uh, into that rear setback. Rather, they're looking to replace the existing deck and continue to utilize that previously approved setback that came into existence legally. Uh, the proposed replacement will not encumber an existing platted utility easement along the rear property line, and then um, uh, this would not be a variant situation if the deck was below 30 inches. Uh, to wrap things up, staff does not believe the variance will adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners or residents. We didn't receive any communications regarding this proposed variance, um, and then it will not create spillover effects, and, in, and staff does not believe it's in opposition to the Land Development Code. To conclude, staff recommends the board grant the variance to reduce the required rear setback from 30 feet to 22.1 feet for the reconstruction of an existing elevated deck at 3104 West 20th Circle. And uh, the applicant is with us tonight as well. Thank you, Luke. This is Chairperson Herod. Uh, does any board members have any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, do we have the applicant here tonight? Luke, you might have to help him out. There he goes. Yes, I got it. Yes, I'm Damon Keeb with Renovation MD um, for uh, Martin and Janet Ward. <laughs> Is there anything you want to throw out for us or anything, Mr. Heeb? No, I just I thank the staff for their uh, for the help and, and work on this. Um, we're basically just rebuilding a, a deck that is there um, now that's become structurally unsound. All right, thank you. This is Chairperson Herod. Um, do any board members have any questions for the applicant? All right, seeing none. Are there in? Is there any public comment tonight? Luke Morrison, planner. Uh, we have no uh, public comment within the city commission room and we don't have any virtual public comment either. Thank you, Luke. This is Chairperson Herod. All right. Uh, I would then, if there's no opposition, bring this issue back to the board for consideration. If you meet, need a motion to close the public comment, I'd do it. Well, or Member would... Gardner. Thank you, General Gardner. We've, we've been skipping over those tonight. Okay, thanks. You're the, you're the one that called me out on that. We also had Board Member Clark reassert his chairmanship tonight. There's 
little kerfuffle over that as well that you missed. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, do we need a motion to close public comment or if you want it, we can do it. You can take a motion to close comment comment if you want. We haven't had any today, so I don't think it really affects anything at this point. Okay, then I withdraw it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, General. This is Chairperson Herod again. So it's back to the commission for consideration of this agenda item. Board member Gardner, I'd support it and uh, make a motion to approve the rear yard setback variance based on the findings of the staff report that concluded it met all five conditions in section 201309 G1. And that is um, reducing the required rear setback from 30 to 22.1 feet for the reconstruction of the existing deck at 3401 West 28th Circle. This is lowly board member Clark, and I would second that motion. <laughs> All right, so it's been it's been moved by board member and general Gardner and seconded by chairman emeritus Clark. <laughs> if there's no opposition, I'd ask the staff to call the roll. All right, staff liaison Catherine Rui. Clark. Aye. Gardner. Aye. Arid? Aye. Rankin? Aye. Chalinski? Aye. Weisner? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, this is Chairperson Herod. Do we have any miscellaneous items or any other business tonight? We don't have any miscellaneous items, but I just want to let you know that as of today, we have two uh, items on the agenda for next month's meeting. And because we have two on the agenda and it may be a light agenda, I'm going to see if we can get our coma training scheduled uh, for that meeting as well, since you'll be here anyway. All right, very well. This is Chairperson Herod. If there's no other items or any business, to be done. I would up. Oh, we have uh, we have board member Clark raising his hand. Yeah, this board member Clark question for staff. Um, has there been any discussion around City Hall about going back in person on these meetings? Are we going to uh, keep these virtually indefinitely? So we have direction to inform you that when there will be a change you will get an email directly from our city manager's office. Um, every board member will get that communication directly when there's a plan change to our current format. I don't, I don't know the timeline, otherwise I would give you a hint, but I don't know, so. That's fine, thank you. Yep. yep. Uh, board member Shalinsky, I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. All right, it's been moved that we adjourn. Is there a second? Board member Gardner, second. All right, thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. I'd ask the staff to call the roll. All right, staff liaison, Catherine Wheat. Clark. Aye. Gardner. Aye. Harrod. Aye. Rankin. Aye. Chalinski. Aye. Wiseman. Aye. All right, the motion carries. We're adjourned. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Have a good Have week. A good one. Bye.